This is not the approach that I took to learn mathematics. So let me just say that right away. So it's really, really clear. This is not something I did. And looking back, it's probably something that I should have done. Do I have regrets? Not really, because there's no point in having regrets. But it would have been a better approach. My method for learning math was simply to grind every day. Do math every single day, no matter what even when I didn't want to, and a lot of times it was really uncomfortable. A lot of times I had to sacrifice personal relationships. Not good. In this video, I want to give you a better approach, an approach that's a little more fun and a lot more effective, I think. So let's start with the types of students that there are. You know, I taught college for many years, so I had thousands of students, and let's focus on the exceptional students. If you're watching this video and you're thinking, I'm not an exceptional student, well, the idea is when you look at people who are really successful in anything they do, you want to see what are they doing that makes them so successful? What are some of the qualities and traits they have? You know, what are the actions they're taking? And are those actions actually making them successful? So there's two types of exceptional math students out there. There's the students that are really quiet. They sit in the back. They work on their own. They grind. They're loners. That was me. I was afraid to raise my hand and ask a question. I didn't talk to anybody. I rarely talked to my teacher. I was that guy in the very, very back, you know, who was hiding in the class picture, um, just not very social, but it worked. I grinded, I did it, I got through it, and I learned mathematics. Then you have the students that take a different approach. And in this video, I want to talk about those students because I think we all have a lot to learn from them. These are the students who are leaders. They are leaders in mathematics. So what do I mean by a leader? Well, to be a leader in mathematics, basically you have to take initiative, you have to be social. And I think that's a much better approach than you know sitting in a cold, dark room with a candle working on math. I mean, as, as, much, as much fun as it sounds, and I've done this, I've worked on physics by candlelight during a hurricane once, it's a long story. Um, <laughs> as much fun as it sounds, it's not really that fun. You know, when you don't have electricity and you have a candle and you're, and you're doing math, it's, it's, it's not that great. But it sounds good. It sounds good, and I've done it. So how do you become a leader? Well, let's talk about it. There's a, there's a couple different things you can do. So an easy way to become a leader, and, and all of this takes confidence, by the way. And, and if you don't have confidence, you can build it, okay? And this is going to help you build it, and this is why I think it's a better approach, is to start forming study groups. I know this is generic advice and everyone talks about it, but it makes a difference. It's those students that form study groups that build those friendships, that build those bonds, and that learn from other people. You know, when you work with other people on mathematics, you can learn from them. And you might say, well, I'm already good at math. I'm just going to end up tutoring everyone. Well, that's okay too, right? You learn through teaching. They say that's one of the best ways to learn, right? Through teaching. So by forming study groups, it makes you know a big deal. Here's, here's a simple experiment. Here's a simple way you can do it. It's like, let's say you're in a college class, right? And then class is over. All you have to do is raise your hand after class and say, hey, I'm going to the tutoring center if anyone wants to join me to study, or hey, anyone want to study with me? And just, just ask, just raise your hand after class and just do it, you know, get up in front of the entire class and just say, hey, does anyone want to go study at location XYZ? I'll be there for the next hour if anyone wants to join me to get ready for the test, you know, make it fun. Chances are at least one student will come. If nobody comes, they're a loss. So it's a great way to build friendships, relationships, and at the same time, meet other students. Form those study groups. And that's a really, really easy way to do it. Most people don't have the confidence to do that. But I've seen it as a teacher. I've seen the students that have that confidence and I've seen what they can do. And they are awesome, right? These are students that are powerful. Not only do they have the confidence to speak out in front of the entire class, not only do they have the confidence to become a leader and just kind of like rally everybody to work on mathematics, they have the confidence to, you know, learn math. It's that same confidence that's going to help them later in life. So by building that confidence while you're in college, it just makes a really, really big difference in your life. So besides forming study groups and being a leader in that regard, you know, what else can you do? Well, something else you can do is start visiting you know, your professor's office hours. This is one that's a little bit easier because it doesn't require that you, you know, raise your hand or anything. All you have to do is go to their designated office hours, knock on their door, 
and hopefully you know you have some questions that you can ask them this is one that i even had a hard time with i was that shy student who again sat in the back and i was scared <laughs> to go see my teachers i remember pretty much every single time i went to my teacher's office hours i have it ingrained in my mind probably because one i was you know so terrified of doing it and two you know it makes an impact you know when you go see your professor when you talk to them face to face when you talk to another human being about mathematics, it's it's very different, right? It's very different from reading a book. It's very different from watching a video on the internet. Talking to people leaves an impact. There's something about being physically with another human being and, and discussing things such as mathematics that is just so different from a book or you know the internet. It's very, very different. And that's gonna make your math better. It's gonna improve your social skills and it's going to help your confidence. So that alone right there is a simple way to be a leader. You might say, well, you're not rallying people. No, you're not, but you're rallying yourself and you're building your own confidence by doing that. And so I think that's something that's a really good approach. Another thing you can do is, if possible, participate in undergraduate research. This is something that I also did not do, right? These are things that I didn't do that I've seen those exceptional students do. I mean, they're just awesome. So undergraduate research is usually available at most colleges um, where I taught. Uh, I was involved in undergraduate research. I helped a lot of students with, you know, their research projects. They basically had to do like a poster. And a lot of times it wasn't um, just only math. It was like applications of math. Um, there were some examples of pure math. For example, I had a student who did one on uh, some stuff with abstract algebra. She was really, really smart. And I think she has her math degree now. I don't really know uh, where she is. But yeah, so those things, you know, stay with you forever. A lot of times you can present your research at different schools. So that increases your confidence even more and you meet more people, you get to travel. So it's a win-win and it's a much better approach to mathematics than, you know, sitting in that cold, dark room alone, you know, doing math uh, by a candle. And as romantic and as fun as it sounds, I mean, it can be, but it's not always fun. Another one is to actually work as a tutor. So if you decide you want to make some money, they're always looking for tutors at colleges. Most of the time, if you go to your tutoring center at your local college, they usually are hiring. The jobs don't really pay very well, but hey, it's on campus. You get to stay on campus and you get to work on mathematics. One of the big things that people have with being a tutor is that they're afraid. They're afraid of several things. Most people are afraid to even go in and ask if they're hiring. So once you get over that fear, you have the whole fear of, oh, wait, what if I don't know the math? You know, what if someone asks me a question and I can't answer it? That's that's always the biggest fear. And I was a tutor for a little while. So this is one that I did do, but only for like six weeks. And I had that same fear, too. And I would just say, I don't know. And I would try to figure it out. And I would ask another one of the tutors there for help. So you can't be afraid of not knowing. You have to get used to being stuck, even even as a tutor. And I think tutors... I think a good tutor is, is a person who you know does their best to help whoever's asking. So you should do that. And again, when you don't know, instead of you know coming up with a fake answer or something, just admit it. Say, I don't really know. I'm not really sure. You know, let me ask so and so. That's the best way to do it. You know, that's the best way to do it. And if you're on the other side of this, if you're one of the people who goes to the tutoring center, be nice to the tutors, right? <laughs> they have it hard. Tutors have it hard, you know, because they have a lot of pressure. They have the pressure to perform. They have their own classes, their own responsibilities, and all of that stuff. So being a tutor is is fun, and it's a good experience. It builds your confidence. It builds your mathematics. And again, it's just a brighter way to study mathematics, right? Be a leader. So again, a couple different ways, you know, form study groups, go to office hours, be a tutor. Those are three ways you can be a leader. And if you really want to take it to the next level, participate in some undergraduate research. So those are things you can do, I think, that will help your journey of learning mathematics better and, and more pleasant, not so much in solitude. You know, people view mathematics as a very solitary thing. And honestly, I always have. I've always viewed mathematics as a very personal thing. It's just me and the book, me and the mathematics, you know, me and the functions and the maps. Um, very, very personal, very deep. It's almost like poetry. But at the same time, there is a social aspect. And I think those students who embrace that social aspect, those students who you know, take it to the next level and show those leadership qualities, they do really well. I mean, they do really well. I've had so many students over the years that are just great leaders. They have that, that personality. They have that drive. And it just works for them. And I was never one of those people. But looking back, 
yeah, I definitely should have done more of that. And I think it would have helped me a lot more and it would have made my math journey a lot easier. What do you think? Do you think that taking these, you know, leadership roles in mathematics can make a difference? Is, is this something you've thought about? And if you have, are you afraid? It's okay. Leave a comment. Are, are there things that you have doubts about? Because I think when I talk about things like this to people, a lot of times people are afraid because it's a big change, right? If, if you were like me, you know, if you were that student who sat in the back and, you know, you didn't want to raise your hand because you were scared to ask questions and someone was telling me all these things, I'd be like, oh, there's no way I'm doing all that. So if you feel that way, hey, it's okay. You can go back to your room if you want and light your candle and study math like I did. But I thought I would make this video just to put it out there, just in case anyone wants a brighter way to learn mathematics. I do think it's a better way. But if you're not used to being a person like this, if you're not used to forming study groups, if you're not used to going to tutoring centers, if you're not used to being a tutor or doing research or going to a professor's office hours, if you're not used to doing those things, it's going to take some work on your part to take it to the next level. If you have any cool stories, any comments, leave a comment below. Also, I am pretty new to Instagram. I, I made an account fairly recently. I think it's been over a month now, maybe two months. And uh, so check it out. It's The Real Math Sourcer. I post all kinds of stuff there. Good luck and keep doing math.